thirsty Come to the well that never runs dry Drink of the water, come and thirst no more Come all the sinners, come find His mercy Come to the table, He will satisfy Taste of His goodness, find what you're looking for So love the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us whoever believes in him will live forever Come lay them down at the foot of the cross Jesus is waiting there with open arms This is open arms For God so loved the world that He gave us His one and only Son to save us Whoever believes in Him will live forever
Good morning, everyone. Good morning, church. Uh, before anything else, allow me to greet everyone a blessed and Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Um, if you are following, we're doing a series with the people who sang to Jesus Christ on the day that he was born. We already talked about um, the song of Mary, the song of Zechariah, and also the songs of the angels. But this morning, we will be going to talk about the song of Simeon. So Simeon is not very familiar to everyone. I mean, if you were to look at Simeon, he was like a, if it, it was a production, a movie production, he was like the cameraman or the, the person that you cannot see in front, but rather at the back or the people at the backstage. Or maybe if in a search uh, church settings, um, he is like a, the one who's closing the curtains or maybe cleaning the instrument, but you won't see this kind of person often in the front. So Simeon is just like that. But Simeon played a very important part, especially when it comes to knowing Jesus Christ or revealing Jesus Christ. So if you have your Bibles with you, please open it with me into the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 25 to 35. Let me repeat that. Luke, chapter 2, verses 25 to 35. I will be reading in New Living Translation. The word of the Lord says in Luke, chapter 2, verses 25 to 35. At the time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was a righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and re rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day, the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is the light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people, Israel. Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them as well. And he said to Mary, The baby's mother, this child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall, but he will be a joy to many others. He has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and the sword will pierce your very soul. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, once again, we praise you and thank you for this wonderful day that you have given us, Father. Indeed, Lord, we are still in awe when it comes to remembering the day when you came here on earth. The day when we have you as our salvation. The day when you came to seek and save the lost. And we all know, Lord, that we are lost. Everyone here on earth are lost. We fall short of your glory, and that's why we need you. And that's why we are still in awe every time we remember the day that you came to save us, Lord. Because we believe that we don't deserve that kind of love. We believe we don't deserve that kind of grace, but still you gave it, you gave it to us freely. And so, Lord, as we ponder upon your word this morning, may you guide us, help us understand, may you touch our hearts and move our minds, especially when we study your word this morning. I pray, Lord, that may you move each one that is going to hear your word this morning, that it would change our hearts and our perspectives, especially when it comes to serving you and praising you. And Lord, I pray and dedicate you the rest of this time that we have in you. May your Holy Spirit guide us this morning. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good morning once again. 
So as what I have said earlier, Simeon is the kind of person that you don't see, we don't see in front, but rather at the back. But Simeon also played a very important role when it comes to not only Christmas, uh, but also in revealing Jesus Christ. As you can see, when we um, look at Mary and angels and Zechariah, when they sang the song or when they praised Jesus Christ, or maybe when ourselves, when we look at ourselves and evaluate, when we view Christmas, we always see Jesus Christ as the baby who came and that day was a silent night and glorious night as well as to others that they were singing songs praising because the Messiah had come. We all know that the Israelites was, was waiting for Jesus Christ for a very long time. And so when Jesus Christ came, those people who devote themselves in waiting, including Simeon, waiting Jesus, for Jesus Christ, and when he came, it was a very glorious day for them. But as we can see, when we evaluate ourselves, we, also, we, we often see, we often, often think of Jesus Christ as the baby who came. Sometimes, when we look at the manger, we have to think also that the purpose of the manger is the cross. The very reason why Jesus Christ came that he was born in a manger because he's going to suffer and die on the cross. And that is what Simeon has revealed to us and to, to Mary. And when we read this particular passage, we would clearly understand the purpose of Jesus Christ, why he came. You know, maybe Mary and Joseph was overwhelmed that they had Jesus Christ, the Messiah, that, they were, that he was born healthy, even if they didn't have place in the inn. But Jesus Christ was born, and the time they went to the temple to present Jesus Christ to the Lord, maybe they, um, as a mother or a father, maybe someone, some of you can relate when you first saw your baby, and then it was like a, a very joyful moment. And maybe Joseph and Mary was overwhelmed. And I don't know, maybe they forget about the purpose of Jesus Christ, and they care about Jesus Christ. Later on, we would... Uh, read that Simeon would reveal to Mary and Joseph the purpose of Jesus Christ. So, this morning, allow me to present you three things, uh, what we can learn, especially in this particular passage, in Luke chapter 2, verses um, 25 to 23. First is that the, the descript description of Simeon, who Simeon is, and this is uh, the only time that we can know or hear about Simeon in the Bible. Second is his recognition to the Messiah. And lastly, his revelation to the Messiah, to the parents, and especially to us when we read the Word of God today. So first, his description. Who was Simeon? Um, Simeon... This is how we should picture him. He's an old person who's waiting for the Messiah. How do we know that he is old? It was clearly stated that Simeon was already um, willing to die or already waiting for his time to depart from here on earth. It was stated there in verses 25. He said, At the time there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was a righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him, and he revealed him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. So, when we pictured, picture Simeon, it was like he was waiting in a temple, waiting for the Messiah, waiting for that very moment what the Holy Spirit told him, that one day you would see the Messiah you would see the glorious Jesus Christ. And maybe Simeon was just waiting in the, at the temple and maybe pointing, is that the, is that the one when he, every time he would see a baby, is that the one, Lord? Is this the one? Is this the Messiah? Waiting until that, that day when Mary and Joseph came and finally he saw the Messiah. So he was an old man 
who was waiting for the Messiah. But not only he was an old man, but we can also read that he is a righteous man, is a devout man, and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah. Later on, we're going to go back in that. And let's just skip a bit. Um, let me uh, just um, save that for the very the best part of the of the sermon. So, Simeon was a devout man. He's a righteous man and waiting for the Messiah. And also, the Holy Spirit was guiding Simeon. Until the day when... Mary and Joseph came to the tem temple and then he saw for himself the Messiah when the Holy Spirit told him so. That's the one. And so Simeon went to Mary and Joseph. For me, it's the way I picture it. It's more like an awkward situation when someone, I can't imagine if my wife and I would have a baby and would go and dedicate it and then suddenly someone or an old person that I don't really know suddenly would came in front of me or come in front of me and then suddenly would take my baby and would tell something about my baby that I didn't know. It would be an awkward moment. It would be like, if Sabisaya pan, on sa manisha, kin sa manisha, who is this person? And why is he holding my baby? And why is he speaking? A glorious moment about my baby or a glorious thing about my baby. So this is um, the encounter looks like. And he revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord Messiah. And so he saw, have seen Jesus Christ. The day the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praise God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is the light to reveal God to the nation, and he is the glory of your people, Israel. So the encounter was most likely a recognition from the Holy Spirit that this is the Messiah and a recognition um, to Mary and to the baby, Jesus Christ, that this is the one, the Messiah. And we can see the reaction of Mary they were, and Joseph. They were marveled of what Simeon just did or what Simeon had declared or people call it the song of Simeon. So song is like a poetic or an expression. So if you love someone, you would sing them a love song with all your with um, what you have felt inside your heart. And if you are mad or maybe you're angry or depressed, maybe you would sing songs that is depressing. Or maybe you would sing songs that is a heavy metal when you're angry or you want to um, smash something. So it more likely the song is like an expression and this is how expressed Simeon when he saw Jesus Christ. Imagine, Simeon was waiting for a very long time um, hoping that he would see the Messiah but also wanting to depart from this earth. But then suddenly when he saw the Messiah, he was praising him with words. He was expressing him with love when he took Jesus Christ in his arms. He was expressing what he had felt for a very long time. And he just burst into praises and adoration for the Lord Jesus Christ. When he held Jesus Christ in his hand, he was saying this word, Lord, I'm ready to die. It was like, Bisaya pa. Lord, pwede na kumamatay. An expression of saying, I have seen everything and Simeon for himself I have seen salvation I have seen the light of this world I have seen the Messiah who would rescue everyone not only for the Israelites but he was saying all people he was expressing his love adoration and praises for Jesus Christ I mean it was a very long time he was he had been waiting 
for the Messiah to come. And it was a confirmation for him that the Messiah was really true. Is And it was a confirmation for him that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, was real. It was a confirmation for him that what the Holy Spirit told him was real. And that's why, that's why he was so happy seeing and he was full of joy seeing the Messiah. He was praising the Messiah. And we can learn from Simeon here. As you can see, maybe some of us was waiting for someone to rescue us before we met Jesus Christ. And then suddenly when we met Jesus Christ, when someone introduced Jesus Christ, maybe in our small groups or maybe someone invited you to church and you have learned about Jesus Christ and how great His love was, and so, you have learned about Jesus Christ and you have met Jesus Christ. You did have an encounter with Jesus Christ. But the question is, are we like Simeon? So happy, expressing his love. Maybe someone of us here are we're just taking it for granted. Maybe someone of us here, maybe that's the reason why we don't really sing song. We don't burst in joy. We don't burst with praises and adoration with Jesus Christ because we don't really know the importance of Jesus Christ in our lives. And here comes Simeon, someone that we don't really talk often, bursting with joy, praising with Jesus Christ. I hope that it would change our perspectives and how we praise Jesus Christ. I mean, if we just realize, if we could just realize who Jesus is and what He has done for us, His great love for us, that He had saved us, He had given us salvation, then we would be bursting in joy like Simeon. We would be praising Him every day, every hour, every minute of our lives we would be living for Him and not for ourselves because of what He had done. And lastly, thirdly, His revelation. So Simeon not only praising, expressing His love through songs and through poetry in Jesus, but He was revealing something. He revealed Jesus Christ or the Messiah, to us, to Mary, and to the people who would read about Jesus Christ. It was stated in verse 33 to 34. It says, Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them, and he said to Mary, the baby's mother, this child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall. But he will be a joy to many others. He has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest thoughts of many's hearts will be revealed. It is a revelation of what the Messiah is about to do, or why did the Messiah came, or why did Jesus Christ came? It was a revelation. It was like for a fall and rising of many. Um, we could look at this or see this um, comparing Peter and Judas. Peter, on the other hand, was the repent. Uh, he was repentant, while Judas, in despair. And thief and blasphemes. You can see two different person who has been following Jesus Christ, and this is how Simeon prophesied or predicted that someone would fall and someone would rise, someone would oppose, someone would be blessed and happy. And Peter, on the other hand, was so happy and blessed, but Judas is another way around. It's the fall of many. And he was the sign. He was the sign from God that is given from God. He was um, 
We could see this when, when Simeon said in 34, he was been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. We could really, um, if you're going to read your Bible and Jesus Christ's ministry, you would see that Jesus Christ was telling about um, God, that we need to believe in him, that he is the way, that we need to repent in our sins so that God would forgive us. But there's a lot of people, especially those religious teachers, Pharisees, opposing him. I mean, God has given, us, given them a sign about Jesus Christ, about the Messiah. Jesus Christ was not only speaking or teaching about God, he was doing miraculous things. He was revealing not only himself, but God the Father, but the people who oppose him. Lack of seeing those things. And that's what they miss. miss. Jesus Christ. The revelation of the Father. And for us, Jesus Christ had been revealed for us in His Word, the Bible. I mean, we've been here in church for a very long time now. We have heard about Jesus Christ, what He wants us to do, what He don't want us to do. But maybe some of us here failed to recognize and failed to apply what Jesus Christ wants us to do. I mean, Jesus Christ had given us a lot of signs. I hope that the same as Simeon, we would see that as an opportunity. We would see that as a sign from above, from a sign from God. Jesus Christ revealing himself, dying for us. Now, for us, when we read um, the word of God, we, we would already know the beginning and the end, what would happen. Because it's all been written there. And we're so blessed in that. And I hope that we would not miss that sign. Maybe some of us are looking for different sign. Maybe, no, this is not new for us. Maybe some of us here would pray like something like, Lord, give me a sign. Like maybe it would rain today so I would know that your blessing would come. Or maybe it's something like that. But as we can see, church, let me tell you this. The sign has already been given to us. His word, we just have to read it. We just have to dig and dive into it. The sign that God gave us, His word, what still we miss to look into the sign and to dig and know more about Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Second, he was um, revealing concerning the mother or Mary. He says, a sword will someday pierce the soul of Mary. Pierce your soul. He was talking to Mary. A sword would someday would pierce your soul. And I could see this. Maybe some of us or maybe the mothers would re could relate, especially when it comes to our children, our sons or daughter. No, mother would care more. Um, especially with their children. I mean, Mary, maybe, as what I have said earlier, forgot that Jesus Christ is not just an ordinary baby. He was the Messiah. He was here to save all mankind because we are all lost and we need a Savior. And that's why Jesus Christ came, right? And maybe Mary was overwhelmed with the cuteness of Jesus Christ when he first held and he couldn't believe that I had this for how many months in the belly and now in my womb and now here it is, Jesus Christ and I'm going to present this and I'm going to care, I'm going to um, bat this baby, I'm going to dress this baby, I'm going to feed this baby and maybe he was overwhelmed with a lot of mother stuff that he tend to forget. And maybe this is a reminder from him. A reminder for, from Simeon to Mary that someday uh, this child that you're holding, this would break your heart into pieces. And allow me to give you a picture of how this did happen. Now We're so blessed that it already happened and we can see it. This is what happened. Mary was standing in front of Jesus Christ being hung on that cross. Imagine for those parents here. Imagine, or for even for those people, not only for the parents. Imagine someone you really love, 
your boyfriend, girlfriend perhaps, or maybe someone dearly to you, your best friend, maybe your parents, maybe your children, or maybe someone who did something very good to you and then you have you appreciate it so much and you have developed love for that person. Imagine seeing that person dying on the cross. It was a shameful death that Jesus Christ had. It was in the cross. So if in our settings, or maybe not our settings today, because maybe someone would, um, it's not legal for us not to, uh, to kill someone, especially if there's a crime committed. But it was like those times, you know, if you remember electric chair, Something like that. Imagine seeing someone, that person you love the most, you care the most, sitting there and waiting to be electrocuted. How sad could that be? How awful could that be? Witnessing someone you love. And this is what Simeon was revealing to Mary. Mm -mm, don't forget. This child would really break your heart into pieces. It's like a dagger that would pierce your heart. Very deep. And we could learn from this. When Simeon revealed to Mary the death of Jesus Christ. But not only that he was saying that this person is going to break you. This person would break your heart into pieces. But this person would really give you a new heart. Because of his death, we could be renewed. Because of this death, all our sins have been forgiven if we believe in him, if we trust in him, that his death is more than enough that could pardon us with all of our sins. Not only that we've been, um, that Mary is going to break, or Jesus Christ is going to break his her heart, but going to give Mary a new heart. And how wonderful could that be? As you can see, we can learn a lot of things from Simeon. Um, as what I have said earlier, Simeon is like, in, if it were in a production, he was like a cameraman, or maybe the person who would um, tell you to light camera action, or the person who assist, who's be assisting the director Maybe not given so much importance, especially in Christmas time. I think the, sh the animals would be given more importance because they were there when Jesus Christ was born. The angels, we would often look at, uh, we would often think of Joseph, Mary, especially Jesus Christ, or the animals, the shepherds when it comes to Christmas, but we don't see Simeon. But as you can see, Simeon played a very important part because he was reminding everyone including us that the purpose of this manger as what I have said is the cross not only Jesus Christ was born but Jesus Christ is going to die and it would break everyone's heart who care for him but because of his death it would be a very glorious moment on the day when he returned because he had given us hope because of this, of his death, we are now waiting for him eagerly, waiting for the, the time when he returned, filled with hope. We can celebrate Christmas year after year. We can enjoy the presence of everyone, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, even if we were in, in our house because of the pandemic, but we can still rejoice in the Lord because we know now that this baby, Jesus Christ, once was born, but also died. So the essence of Christmas not only stopped when Jesus Christ was born, when Jesus Christ uh, broke the silence, but also we have to remember when we think about Christmas, we would also think about Jesus Christ dying on the cross. You know why? So a while ago, earlier I said, let's skip first the description of Simeon now, let let me go back in that part. This is, I want to end my sermon. A very glorious and a very, very wonderful or marvelous thing that we could ever see here. It was, a, it was stated there in verses 25. At the time there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout 
and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and res rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him. Four things. He was righteous, devout, waiting for God eagerly, and the Holy Spirit was with him. I mean, when we look at Simeon, especially when we read about Simeon, you would see that Simeon is a very good man, right? He devout himself. He's a righteous man. Maybe if I would ask this morning, is there someone? If I, would, if I were to ask you, are you a righteous man? Can you, um, can you tell me that you're a righteous man with um, not thinking or double thinking? But here is Simeon. This is what the Bible, or this is how the Bible um, describe him. A righteous man who was waiting for Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is upon him. He is your ideal Christian guy. He don't really, we don't really, uh, he don't really get the credits that he, uh, but he was a righteous guy. But here's the thing. When the Holy Spirit revealed to him the Messiah, Jesus Christ, he was led to the temple. He said, and he revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord Jesus Christ. When the Spirit led him to the temple and he saw Joseph and Mary, Simeon was there. He took the child. He took the child in his arm and praising God and saying, Sovereign Lord, now, let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I have seen your salvation. Take note of this verse, verse 30. I have seen your salvation. Which only proves, which only proves that being a righteous man, devouting herself to God, waiting for him eagerly to return, is not enough. We need Jesus Christ. And that is the essence of Christmas. If we could just know, if we could just know and put in our minds and our hearts every day of our lives that we need Jesus Christ, not just a one-time event, but every day. We could be righteous, we could obey all those commandments, but it would not suffice. It would lack something. And that is the reason why Jesus Christ had to step down from heaven. Because we lack something to fill into that void. And that is Jesus Christ. So you can see, Simeon, a righteous man, needing Jesus Christ. How much more us? How much more us? We need Jesus Christ. So every time we remember Christmas, not only we remember a baby in a manger, but we would see him, someone that we need. Lord, you are the one, the answer of everything. You are the one who could fill the void inside me. I've been waiting for a very long time. Every time we celebrate Christmas with our family, we have to remember that we need this. We need Jesus Christ. Lord, we need you. And maybe some one of us may be overwhelmed with everything, with the celebrations, with our family who came and visited us, maybe all the handa or the noche buenas, and we get overwhelmed and we forget the true essence of Christmas, and that is Jesus Christ not stopping in the manger and dying, and we need that. And when we have that, just like Simeon, we would burst in praises. We would burst in adoration for him. We would praise him, give him all the glory, not us. We would not even look at others. We would not even look up to others, but only to him. Jesus Christ, I've been waiting for you. I need you, and here you are. So the challenge for us this morning is to really Accept Jesus Christ for those people who haven't known or haven't accepted Jesus Christ. Let me remind you this. You can obey everything here in the Bible. You can be a righteous man to others. You could do good things. 
You could donate a lot of things, especially when calamity comes. You could do a lot of things, good things, that people would praise you. But apart from Jesus Christ, the salvation, as you can see, Jesus Christ is our salvation. Not just what He has done on the cross. That's not our salvation, not the cross. Jesus Christ Himself. Remember, every time Jesus Christ speaks about Himself, He says, I am the way. Is I am. He Himself is the gift. He Himself is the salvation. Jesus Christ. So for those people who haven't accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, maybe this is a beautiful time to end the year. Just to accept Jesus Christ and pray. The way we can talk to Jesus Christ through prayer. And so I would challenge you to pray. It could be today, this very time, or maybe tomorrow or tonight. It's up to you. But again, Jesus Christ has been given to us. It's up to us to accept Him. We can talk to Him through prayers and tell Him that we need Him and we need to repent for all the sins so that Jesus Christ could forgive us. And the challenge for those people who have Jesus Christ in their hearts is to show Jesus Christ to others. In our actions, in our words, we should share Jesus Christ and we should celebrate Jesus Christ not only during Christmas, not only during Sundays, but every day, every day, just like Simeon. We have to express our love, adoration, and praises to our Lord Jesus Christ. And so I challenge you to share Jesus Christ. Tell people about Jesus Christ and His great love for us. Have a blessed Sunday, everyone. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for the wonderful gift that you have given us. Your son, Jesus Christ, who was born in a manger and finished everything at the cross. Lord, we are still in awe of your goodness and your great love for us. And Lord, as we remember, as we celebrate Christmas and New Year, May your spirit help us to remember the greatest gift that we had is Jesus Christ. That we have to accept him, the salvation, not the things that we do for him, but because he is the salvation. And Lord, I pray, especially for those Christians who's been here for a very long time, that you would strengthen him, give them the power to be bold enough to express their love for you through singing songs, praising you, and especially in obeying what you have commanded us to do and telling people about your great love. Lord, it's such a privilege for us and a joy for us to be an ambassador to you and represent you and tell people of your great love through our actions, our words, and everything. So we thank you and we love you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.